Hi, I'm Amy Eisenstein, and I'm here with Susan Holt, who's the founder and president of the Vision Philanthropy Group. Susan has raised billions of dollars for university and hospital campaigns, and I am so excited she's here with us today. Welcome, Susan. Thank you so much, Amy. It's really a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. We're gonna be talking about ma major gifts and transformational gifts and culture of philanthropy. So how do you wanna get started? Well, first of all, I wanna thank you for the wonderful introduction that you gave to me. And um, I have had a distinct pleasure of being a part of major, uh, philanthropic efforts that have raised billions of dollars for universities and medical centers, academic medical centers, but I didn't do it alone. I had partners. Yes. And so I would never want to take full credit for that because the partners that I want to talk with you about today in the culture of major gifts were absolutely part and parcel to the opportunities that arose as a result of the relationships we had together. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, <laughs> and you're, you're so right. But thank you, <laughs> nonetheless. <laughs> yes, yes. So today we're gonna talk about creating powerful partnerships and transforming cultures at organizations that result in new major gifts. Tell us about it. One of the first things I do, Amy, um, in looking at how to help an organization really move into um, attracting and um, um, honoring investments that are going to be really transformational to, this, to their institution is to look at the culture. What is the culture of that organization that supports or maybe does not support major gift relationships? And it's, a, it's very different in a special event world. We, we tend to be more transactional mm. than in terms of building relationships for the long haul. Now, some of that's absolutely understandable because we have pressure we have great pressures on us to achieve our goals yeah. each and every year and so there's a there's a strong uh push i think to go back to what we know what we've done mm. rather than maybe investing more t in terms of the long haul yeah. uh, where we may not be ready to ask for that uh that major gift in this particular fiscal year but to answer your question, to go back, um, one of the first things that I do is to look at the culture. That is the attitudes, the behaviors, the way in which everyone in the organization, internally as well as the board, which is a part of our internal kind of external mix, are relating with one another and what, what are their impressions and feelings about philanthropy. Do they think of philanthropy as these investments in our noble mission? Um, and do they project it as such? Or is it fundraising that's kind of put out there on the side that maybe none of us really want to talk about or necessarily honor? Because talking about money and asking for money makes us really nervous. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I know I'm sure you've seen that in your in your career. Of course. So, let me give you an example. Yeah. One of the first things that we do is look at what what happens in the board meeting mm -hmm. uh, of an organization. Um, sometimes there are foundations that may be separate and and that's what they're there to do. The right. the supporting organization uh, may be a foundation and and Hopefully, they're going to be spending a lot of time talking about the mission, the impact of the giving, and, um, and, and the uh, various ways in which we're going about uh, pursuing our philanthropic support. But even then, I find sometimes that doesn't happen. It's mm. all about financials. But go and look at the board meeting and examine what's happening in terms of a discussion about philanthropy yes. and the impact that it's having on your organization. Is it a regular part of the board agenda or is it something that's put off at the very end and maybe we'll talk about it 
if we can get to it. And, and people sneak out of the meeting before we get to that conversation. Yes. If it's last on the agenda, I always like to say, if fundraising and philanthropy are last on your board meeting agenda, you know where it is in terms of the priority of the organization. Yeah. It's last, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's, so, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So um, one of the most important things that um, uh, I see that happens with organizations that are truly beginning to transform into that major gift cult philanthropic culture mm -hmm. is that the board chair and the CEO or the president of the organization are absolutely on the same page. They understand the value proposition that transformational gifts are bringing to the organization and they put that first and foremost. It's almost like what, what I like to see happens at my church. You know, mm. we have a minute for mission. Uh -huh. Yeah, well the church is better be doing that, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what all we're all about. All of our organizations all, better be doing you're right. it, right? You're I absolutely mean. right. All of our organizations need to be having that minute for mission. Yeah, the, the idea that we have a whole board meeting and don't talk about philanthropy or the impact is kind of appalling, don't yes. you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and and it's, it, I, I always scratch my head, but you know, these things come about, I think, as a, as a result of historical practice. Yeah. Not because people are maybe necessarily making a distinct decision that right. I'm going to keep philanthropy off the table. You're right. It's a historic way of practicing. Yeah. And once we see that by moving that mission, mm -hmm. impact of philanthropy to the top, not only does it represent the priorities of the institution, but people themselves start to internalize that. The board chair, the president, mm. the board members themselves, who are amongst our most important partners, yeah. begin to internalize that and they start talking about philanthropy in new and different ways. Yeah. We give them stories to tell. Good. I was going to ask you, let's say an organization wants to try this and they put uh, philanthropy up towards the beginning of their board meeting agenda. How do they start that conversation? I mean, stories is certainly one way. How do they generate discussion? What kind of questions can they yeah. ask of their board members to get the wheels turning? Yeah, well, there's there, that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Um, I think there's two approaches that can be taken. One is that uh, we as development officers have to be very intentional about this. So we can't just leave this up to happenstance hoping against all great hope that it's going to uh, come about. One of the things that I think is so helpful is when the board chair will say to the group, and, and we can help prep them mm -hmm. in, in doing this, is saying, um, you know, it's really important that our philanthropic agenda be front and center on our agenda of our yes. board meetings. Yes. But that needs to be said. Yes. Don't let it hopefully, you know, <laughs> seek through the cracks that right. people are gonna pick it up. And if you're moving it, be intentional and yes. let everybody know we're doing this with the intention of right. having a, be a more thoughtful, strategic culture of philanthropy. Yes. Right? Yes. This is one of the first steps we're taking to go in that direction. That's right. Uh, we approach the CEO and the board chair, and hopefully there's a development committee or a ph philanthropy committee, right. um, and that chair all together to sit down in a transparent way without without placing blame, but say, this is a new day. Yeah. How are we going to go about um, our work uh, today? Yeah, so what's one of the things that might be on the scorecard? What are we striving towards? What are we working for? Well, you know, I think the first thing is to uh, look at what's the, and this can be kind of tough sometimes, but what's the, uh, what does the partnership look like between the CEO, the board chair, and the vice president of development? Mm -hmm. um, are we getting together regularly and talking? Are we regularly as a triumphant, mm. um, uh, as a trio, yeah. uh, getting together and looking at 
where we're going in our both our philanthropic culture, but then also our outcomes. Yeah. And to, so oftentimes I find that those are isolated, mm -hmm. siloed conversations. Yeah rather than ones that are synergistic. Wonderful. Any final tips for our viewers? Key takeaways you want to leave them with? Communication. So, you know, when I look at great partnerships, there are all kinds of great partnerships out there in the world, right? It's partnerships with our, uh, with our, um, our colleagues at work. It may be partnerships with our, our spouse or partner. And I look at What's absolutely the key element to making that be a successful partnership? And it almost always comes down to communication. So true. So if you, so I guess what I would want to leave with, uh, with our viewers is um, examine carefully, not just yourself, but maybe with your team. Sit down with your de development team and uh, when you finish one of those uh, major gift prospect reviews, and everybody's really kind of tired, <laughs> um, do something that's maybe going to be a little bit uplifting and, and um, put us in a different frame of mind and look at how are we communicating and do an assessment of that and create a score, scorecard. How are we communicating with our internal colleagues to create new alliances mm. and new partnerships that are intentionally communicated. Beautiful. Susan, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Well, it's really fun speaking with you too, Amy. It's a pleasure and thank you for inviting me to, to join you today. Thanks so much for joining me. For even more videos, interviews, tools, and resources, I hope you'll visit my website, amyeisenstein.com, and subscribe to my weekly newsletter.